Okay, so, um, good morning. So, try again. Good morning. In order to try and help everybody to start developing um, a proper complex web application, I decided to actually run through the creation of one step by step, bit by bit, so that people can actually try and understand how to go and implement it on their own. I'm going to try and separate it into different parts, so I'll make different videos, and all of the videos put together should bring the application. Um, the first thing that I'm going to look at is the structure of the application. Then I'm going to work on just connecting the database. Then I will connect the text analytics service um, and just start getting a few more things in just to get the application a little bit more complex. I'm going to do this step by step. And first of all, let's go and have a look at what exactly it is that I am trying to build. So my idea is to create a service that can be used to detect, um, let's say, psychological traits. Uh, I want to be able to pass a document. And when I pass a document, I want to know what the writer was, first of all, um, maybe the meaning of the document. And I also want to go and analyze the document in a way that I get a psychological profile of the user. Now, this becomes very useful when you start looking at, for example, work done by students, or if you're doing massive amounts of curriculums, you know what you're looking at curriculum, so perhaps you can try in your system to find the curriculum that you want. So let's have a look. So this is my service. I have the psychological front end, the Alex psychologist, Alex psychologist, psychologist. You have the Alex psychologist web page. So this is just the front end. Then you have the Mr. Shrink service, which is a service that once you pass a document, it will bring back some analytics about it and it will always also take care of storing it in a database somewhere and then you have a text analytics service which is a compound service made up of many different services for now I'm looking just at natural language processing I'm looking at sentiment and I'm looking at translation as well because perhaps the document was written in a different language. And as you can see, the services are all in parallel. So I can go and add more and more later. For today, I'm using the ones which are provided by IBM Watson and that's going to be our foundation to build this application. So let's get started. Let's see before we go and do other things if we have everything set up. Um, the natural language processing service should be set up and your database. Now for the database, this time I'm going to use Mongo Atlas so no one gets um, limited to a particular vendor. Mongo Atlas is very useful, it's very easy to use, it's cheap. Actually you can get a half a gigabyte for free. So yes, go ahead and make use of it. Um, let's have a look. So this is uh, Mongo Atlas. You can go and create your web page. Sorry, you can go and create your database here. And really all you have to do is you can you have to go and build a new cluster. Uh, I've already created mine, so I will not actually create it. Um, choose wherever you want, potentially somewhere close to you. And then you just go and click create cluster and that will create the cluster itself. Now the cluster doesn't have a database in. You have to actually connect to the database so that you can create um, the database. So you need to create. You need to connect to the cluster so that you can create a database in it. Um, you can do that in a number of ways. You can do it in code, or you can use a Mongo. Um, what is it called? You can use Compass. 
So Compass is an application which is very simple to use. It automatically connects. Um, I have it here up and running if I find it. Uh, here it is. I'll just bring it up. So this is Mongo Atlas. Um, what allows you to do is, let's see, so these are all the collections that I have. Um, let's see. Let's see, I want to go home. So this is my cluster. This is the entire cluster. And the cluster itself, um, I preloaded it with some documents. Mongo Atlas allows you to do that. Um, and then you can go and create a database. There you go. You click on create database and this will create a database for you. Done. You go here and you say yes, that's the name of the database and then you create a collection. Now, for those who are not used to Mongo, a collection is kind of corresponding item in a NoSQL of a table. So a collection is a collection of documents. The same way a table is a collection of rows. It's just different terminology. You can create a database and you can create a collection name. So for example, database name could be the name of your application and then collection name could be users, could be documents, could be analysis, could be anything really. So that part is done. Now the other part is to go and set up the actual services. So in this case, I just log in into IBM Cloud. Yes, just log in. I've already created mine, so you, I'm not going to recreate them, but the principle is the same. Just waiting, because sometimes it takes a little bit. There you go. Now, um, the services that I'm using are the Watson services. So all I have to do is to go and look for Watson. Uh, it should be here. I can go down here. I go and select Watson. So there's a few already that you can go and, and use. Um, there's some information from getting started. Makes it easy. Um, but let's have a look at the Watson services. I'm going to do Browse Services. Here are all of the services that you can use. Uh, let's have a look. Knowledge, Speech to Text. So I was using for this one Natural Language Understanding. You just go here. Um, as per usual, you choose where you want to deploy it. Some information um, about how much you can use it. For example, you can do 30,000 for free every month, which is not bad at all. And I can't create it because I already created it, but basically you just give it a name. Now, once you create it, that will appear in your dashboard. Let's have a look at mine. Services. Then I will go and look at it. So here's my natural language understanding service. Now, the one thing which is important here is to get the API key because the API key is what you use to actually communicate, um, to give access to your application. Um, so if you go here, there you go, you will see your credential, you will see your API key. You just have to show it, you just have to copy it, so you don't actually show it in the video. And you will use this to actually go and connect your application to the service itself. Okay, now the next part, before I do anything else, it's good practice that you set up your entire project from the beginning. Now, to set up my project, I'm going to be using uh, my basic node application. And what does that mean? It means that I'm going to instantiate all of the services right now. So I'm going to copy the URL. And I know that I'm going to need uh, one, two, three, three services, um, three backends. Um, this is a backend as well because it's the actual web server. So I'm going to go and create those. So I'm going to say 
uh, new repository. I'm going to say import repository. Okay, I'm going to call this um, my. I'm actually going to use the same name that I gave here, the Mr. Shrink. I call this Mr. Shrink service. I'm going to begin the import. And then I'm going to import again. This time I'm going to call it uh, Alex Psycho, I guess. Sounds nice. Alex Psycho. There you go. Begin the import. And then I need one more, which is the text analytics service. I'm going to do another import. Uh, and I call it this um, Alex text analytics. There you go. I'm gonna do the begin the import, and then the next part will be probably the simplest part, which is to go and set them up in your project. Now, the way I generally set them up, let's have a look. I'm going to create a PowerShell. Uh, dev. Um, I'm going to call this um, MKDL um, Online Shrink. Yeah, uh, and I'm going to clone all of my repos in here. Uh, so let's have a look. So I created uh, all of them. They should be ready by now. Um, let's see if they've been created. They should be by now. Repositories. There you go. Um, so yes, they're all being created. Uh, yeah, I'm going to clone this. Git clone. In here, yes. And then I'm going to do the same for all the others. For the text analytics, git clone. And then my Alex Psycho. Git clone. And if everything goes well, this is what you should be getting now. Uh -huh. So we'll be using that. Now I have all three. I go and you create another Visual Studio Code instance just to keep it nice and separate. Now, this is good practice, but also bad practice, um, because it can get confusing sometimes. But you can go and do something along these lines. Where is it? There you go. So now you have all of your projects here. Because potentially what you might also have is that on top of this, you might have some files to actually start everything together. Um, keeping um, three different parts of the project uh, in the same window could be useful sometimes. I recommend it for people who can keep track of things. Uh, but if people are, have a tendency to misclick or do such things, I highly don't recommend it. Okay. Let's see. Um, I guess the biggest point that you have here is that when you go and try to create a terminal, the terminal actually is in the root of the of the container folder, not of the maybe the code where you're working on. And so that's where the confusion comes in. Uh, okay. So this 
was the overall how to set up the project and what the idea of the project was and that's it for now i'm gonna go into the next one which is connecting it to the database bye bye